as you can see, I've just had our advanced life support skills session today. Now, we've always had basic life support. We've never gone into the sort of using the defib, adrenaline, putting fluids up, bloods up, when and how to do those sort of things. So this session was really, really good because I've never experienced a cardiac arrest before. I have done the training. I've done the life support training at the QE hospital for my job, and that includes the routine of using the defib, shouting for help, that's it. But it doesn't go as far as using the adrenaline, fluids, things like that, that I've just mentioned. So this was really, really interesting because one, I've never been in that situation. Two, I've never had any training on it. Three, new information that I love, I love gaining new information and training and knowledge. I absolutely love it. Today's session involved, also this is another thing. So in the training that I have done using the DFib, it's always been um, a sort of pretend one, a practice one. So it doesn't come up with the heart rate or anything like that. And this was a live DFib that we used today. And it was sort of monitored and set up to a computer to show the rhythm and so that we could sort of look at what we should be looking out for and whether it's a shockable rhythm or not because if you didn't know i didn't know this before i learned about defibs and things so if you don't know this already you use a defib on a heart rhythm because a defib is not used to restart the heart it's used to stop the heart i know why would you want to stop the heart i hear you ask for those of you that don't know. So basically, in the event of a cardiac arrest, there will be a really irregular electrical pulses shooting through the heart, through the SA node, AV node, all of that, really irregular, causing a lot of problems, patient's unconscious, and you want to reset that. So the patient's got a regular steady rhythm again. So you're shocking it, hoping that it's gonna stop and then the heart's gonna kick back in and start and it's gonna be regular when it starts again. That's what the purpose of a defib is. I know, it's amazing. So if someone has flatlined, no rhythm, no electric pulse, don't use a defib because there's no point. It's not gonna restart the heart. You just literally just getting onto the chest compressions. You still do that. Still do your chest compressions and breaths, but you won't use the electric impulse because there's no electrical activity going on in the heart, if that makes sense. So that's when you would use a defib is when there is a electrical activity in the heart and you're just gonna boom, boom, readjust that, hopefully. But yeah. Um, today's session was really, really, really useful. Like I said last week about my ECGs and not understanding, I still don't really understand interpreting the squiggly line bits. <laughs> I'm sure there's a proper name for it. Squiggly line bits is good for me. Um, and I really need to look into and revise and get on YouTube still because I haven't done that over the weekend, but I will do it today because I've got some time. So uh, the, apparently there's two types of rhythms that you can shock and there's two type of rhythms that you do not shock. And that's what I need to look into. I need to recognize the rhythm, recognize the signs and know if I can shock the patient or not. So I need to look into that. I didn't know this, this was new information. And yeah, so, and then there's different types of reasons why that person's gone into cardiac arrest. So it's trying to figure out that as well. Is it because they've gone into hypovolemic shock? So then you, you wanna get the fluids in. Is it a thrombus? So if they had a heart attack as a result of a blood clot, trying to sort of fix the initial problem. I suppose it's like a root cause analysis. You're working your way backwards to find out what the root cause is, fix that, and the rest will solve itself. But yeah, all in all, today was a great session. Tomorrow we've got a whole day of policy and politics, which is policy and politics. I'm not gonna go on about that again because I keep talking to you every week about policy and politics. Also today I had a meeting with our personal development department. So this is a really, really good idea if you have written an assignment, whether you are bad at assignments, whether you're good at assignments, it's really, really useful to go to your personal development department and get them to check over and check it for you. Because I found I've written my assignment and I'm thinking, yeah, this sounds good. I'm, I'm hitting the money here. I think this sounds really good. Actually, when I went today, and she pointed out a few things that I'd done wrong. I hadn't even noticed. Things like, in my introduction, I had put, this assignment will be discussing blah, blah, blah. Sounds good, right? Sounds normal. No, that's past tense. And I didn't even realize I'd done it. She's like, no, you need to 
put this essay will discuss an experience that's happened blah 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 and stop talking about pan past tense in your introduction because it's not past tense in the introduction and I didn't even pick up on that and I was like wow do you know what I've been focusing so much on my main body of the assignment I've never thought about a good introduction or a good conclusion so now I need to up the game and I've got quite a few edits to make because apparently in my reflection bit I haven't talked about my thoughts and feelings enough in the first section so I need to edit it all but apart from that really really good I love seeing PDD and they are amazing and just like I've just shown I thought I was doing really well in that assignment but I thought I'll just check it just in case because I'm finding this too easy and um, which is usually a bad sign I think so yeah, so it just shows, it doesn't matter how well you're doing or how bad you think you're doing, go and get someone to proofread it and just check it over because they might see something that you, you're not seeing at that time, like me. So that's it, I'm gonna stop talking now. So that's it, um, and today we've got all day physiology and I've got the dentist again, just to, um, I've got a filling. Yeah, we won't talk about that right now. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I'll see you all tomorrow guys. So it's now Wednesday, I've just been to the dentist and I thought it'd be a great idea to do a vlog with half my face numb. I don't know why. <laughs> but I'm gonna give it a go, count how many times I bite my tongue and mouth whilst I try and do this. And we'll see. So today we had our physiology sessions, which is our lovely Mary. She's not a problem, she's lovely. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, I'm still not keen on Mary. But today, in our second session, actually all of today actually made sense. So I was like, yeah, okay, we can understand this. This is bringing back some of the physiology from the other case studies. So today we were talking about the immune response because now Mary, she's had her, oh gosh, what did they call it? Burrahola? can't remember burrahola I'll put the real word there because I'm not going to google it now um but it's where they drill a hole into the skull to relieve the pressure because she's got this subdura hematoma that's what that's called and then they do a craniotomy something like that's one of those words again I'm going to put it in there um where they literally remove the skull and the flap then they suck all of the blood out basically is what they do it was a really great video to watch we watched that in our first lecture this morning so she's had that operation now so we've relieved that we've sorted out her hematoma and now we've given her some IV antibiotics this isn't real life this is just in theory and now she's had an anaphylactic shock reaction to the antibiotics because Obviously, this subdura hematoma wasn't enough for Mary, so we're going to throw something else at her. So <laughs> she's had an anaphylaxis, and now we have to manage that. So we went into the immune response, bronchoconstriction, vasodilation, whoosh, leaky capillaries, respiratory is going up because of the CO2 and the O2, lack of O2, high CO2, bronchoconstriction, so her bronchoconstriction is impairing her gaseous exchange so less co2 getting out less o2 going in which means an increase in co2 which means a decrease in ph Whew, i know i'm going too fast sorry <laughs> so yeah so that's what we did today and that i can do I can do the inflammatory response i can do respiratory rates i can do anything to do with respiratory but the whole subdura, cranial pressure, um, mathematic equations, it baffles me, it does baffle me. So today I did understand it and I was relieved. I was like, yes, okay, I understand this. Still don't want Mary as part of the exam, but tomorrow we're gonna find out who it is, who we've got for our exam. Fingers crossed, come on, pray, pray it's Arthur. Come on, Arthur, come on, anyone but Mary, please. So then I had to dash at the end of the lecture, I had to go to my dentist, had a fill in, my mouth's still numb, it's five o'clock now, don't know how I'm going to eat dinner, I've bit my tongue I think about three times because you can just kind of feel it but it doesn't hurt because there's no pain there. 
but yeah, apart from that, dentist was all right. I've talked too much about dentists. So yeah, so that's it for today. I shall see you all tomorrow and hopefully it's gonna be a good day. It is our last physiology sessions tomorrow of forever. Our last physiology forever, forever, ever, forever, ever. I know. <laughs> what am I gonna do when there's no physiology? I've got no idea. What I might start doing between now and our exam is doing like, I'm gonna do, I said this, I was gonna do some revision session vlogs. So I might do some revision session vlogs and start explaining it over camera to you. And hopefully that's gonna help me because I'm teaching you, it's gonna help me jog my memory and help me with my exam hopefully. So I will do that maybe as a weekly thing. We'll see how it goes. I'm hoping I'm gonna get it all right and not teach you wrong. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna pass this exam, get those grades, come on. I shall see you all tomorrow. Fingers crossed we've got some good news tomorrow. You should be seeing a smile. I won't try not to smile. It's going to be wonky, isn't it? Oh, not too bad. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs>
Anyway, today, our wonderful lecturer, who's amazing, big it up for Steve, fantastic lecturer, he explained it again, but he first explained what CPP actually is, which we didn't know. And I think that's where he might have went wrong last time, was that I think maybe he might have just assumed that we knew what that was. And I mean, I don't know what it was, maybe other people did, but I didn't have a clue. I was like, what is this CPP? What are you going on about ICP, CPP? No idea. ATP, that I know. Um, so yeah, so he was saying the CPP is basically the cerebral perfusion pressure. I've got a feeling it's pressure. I'll put it there, like always, when I don't get it right. So yeah, so basically that means because of Mary's subdura hematoma, it's got blood on the brain, um, it's causing a barrier, it's causing a blockage to the brain. So that means there's not no blood passing through the brain, but blood, the fresh blood coming in, um, can't cross over and perfuse the brain as it should with oxygen. So there's no blood getting to the brain, there's no oxygen, lack of oxygen, all of that jazz. So then, because the body, physiologically, the body's responding to this by saying oh my god the brain's got no oxygen we need oxygen what we're going to do we're going to increase blood pressure so we're going to increase the stroke volume circulatory volume so we're going to get the heart pumping faster to get more blood out to get the blood to the brain to get more oxygen and all that blood's going to the brain it can't go anywhere so it's causing a higher increase in pressure to the brain and again it's just a vicious circle so it's not going in there's no oxygen so again it's sending another signal increase the blood volume get the more volume and it's going to go up and up and then she's going to be in all sorts of trouble so that i understood today and i explained it to you so that's a bonus with mary i, I still don't think i know enough about mary and i don't feel confident with the full terminology because i really struggle with words for me I, i've got to go betty i think i will do better on betty Better on Betty, that sounds nice. Better on Betty. I'll do better on Betty than Mary. Either way, semi-doomed with this exam now. <laughs> but I've just got to make sure now I've spent the next five weeks revising, 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 practicing, writing it, writing it, writing it, so that I get it right for the exam. And hopefully I'm going to be all right. Fingers crossed. That is a little bit of sad news for the week. I'm really sorry, guys. But we've got to do it. There's nothing I can do about it. Me stressing is not gonna change the exam. It's not gonna change the outcome. I've just got to make sure I'm on my A game, get the revision in, make sure I'm on the money with this exam. Fingers crossed, we can do this. I can do this, we can do this. My group at uni are going to do this because we're all gonna support each other in this. We're all gonna feed back off each other. We've already set up some revision sessions together. We're gonna hopefully smash the exam fingers crossed, pray for us guys. So yeah, so next week is dedicated to revision, flashcard making, all of that jazz. I'll do some revision session videos for you. And next Sunday will be, I think a revision session maybe. So a bit of physiology on acute coronary syndrome and renal function because she's got an impaired renal. She's got um, chronic kidney disease and acute kidney injury as well as her MI. So you're all going to learn about that. I hope you're ready for it. I hope you're ready to learn with me. Hope I can teach you well and teach myself. It's going to help me revise. So thanks, guys. So yeah, so have a great day. Have a great Sunday. Have a great week. And I'll see you all next week. Mm -hmm.